Greetings and salutations, travelers. Welcome back to the Inn of Planar Crossroads. And as always, welcome back to our Around the Hearth discussions. This time, we're going to be discussing um, Mecha, and specifically, handling scale and theme at the table. And we've started alluding to what we're going to be talking about here already in our previous two discussions. The first one was does choosing your theme, and the second one was choosing your scale. And now we're going to be talking about implementing those things at the table, which we did, as I said, allude to in those two discussions. So I do encourage you to go back and watch those because you may be a little lost if you don't. But you don't have to. I mean, you can jump right in now. I am not your mama. You can do what you want, I suppose. So uh, before we get into that, let's go ahead and uh, get announcements out of the way. I'll start us off so that people can think about what they want to say. I am Adam L. Spain with the Interplanar Crossroads. We have our current milestone that we're uh, going forward to is to try and get $100 of support a month, uh, whether that's through Patreon, subs uh, Patreon locals, uh, direct contact, or subscribe star, or whatever. That's what our goal is for this foreseeable future. So once we get there, we'll be doing giveaways and one shots and all that type of stuff, uh, especially when we get there. And if we go a little over, I may do some special orders for stuff to give away. Like um, I'm heavily considering some metal dice should we get past a hundred a hundred dollar support at some point. So that's per month. Uh, and supporting even once gets you access to the Discord. So. You can do that even if it's just a dollar. You get access to the Discord for, you know, and until you get yourself booted out or something. I don't know. Uh, try not to do that. Um, but that's our current announcement and goal. So, Dan, what do you got? Hello, it's Dan and, of course, Jacob. I'm very excited. He's joining us from Avenue Studios. Hello, we create hello. GRPG content on uh, YouTube rumble and anywhere you can find your podcast uh our biggest thing now is that we also live stream wednesdays 9 p.m eastern and with these collaborations with interplanar crossroads we will be using ideas from these around the hearth probably picking like two or three to highlight in a one shot uh that we will build in foundry on our forest forge live streams and then at the end of the month we'll do an actual play where we'll test that out and then hopefully all things go going well, it will be available for you to uh, <clears throat> get from the Forge and play in Foundry Virtual Tabletop uh, yourself. And of course, let us know how that goes if you do that, because we love to hear our actually our first one that uh, Jacob has put together officially that we live streamed uh, to kind of prepare for this collaboration is in Savage Worlds and it is up in the Forge and available it uh if you check out our live streams on that it's the pinned comment has the link as well as our social media will have all that so we're very excited to be doing this we'll be doing lots of different systems based whatever systems fit the themes we're talking about the best so we'll be doing that and of course we also have our uh, special kanaga movie night on april 1st no joke we will be doing april 1st <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're doing a lightning goal on our channel as well getting three at this point now three more supporters to join if we do so we're going to be doing a bunch of giveaways during that movie night we're going to add an extra big bundle with a whole bunch of stuff in it um if we hit that extra goal there so i'm very much looking forward to that and uh very excited to talk more mechs because it's great all right and Normally, I would have a shout out. It'll go to Copper Dragon Games, who would have been here if the EMP had not struck his mech. <laughs> Indeed. So he tried his best. We will. Uh, anytime we do a spotlight, I always put a link down to them in the description on where you can find them, or at least I try to. So check in the description or the doobly doo, whichever you prefer to call it, and it'll be there. So oh, yeah. click right on over. And I'll just throw on top of that. As of the time when this comes out, we'll have already filmed our collaboration with Interplanar Crossroads and Copper Dragon Games, so check out that game we did uh, as a live stream. That'll be up in our live stream playlist, so... Yes, you'll get to see... Assuming he recovers. <laughs> assuming he recovers, you will get to see Nobby and Krusk and... Yep. 
uh, <clears throat> Azora. Azora. And then Dan's character. Yimik. What is it? Yimik. 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 Okie dokie. So there you go. <laughs> um, now, I think that's everything that we have to cover before we dive into our discussion. So, grab your preferred yeah. beverage, curl cool. up by the fire, and take a few drinks while we discuss using and implementing scale and theme at the table. So, um, anybody want to start us off with this one? Or would you like me to start us off? I have an interesting suggestion. Okay. I think something that could be very fun to do with this is to have each person have two character sheets in two systems. Ooh. Oh, two systems. Yeah. Oh, interesting. You play the humans in one system and the robots in another. Oh. Intriguing. That's interesting. It would require you Allowing to know two symptoms. Have... Hmm? It would require you to know two systems, though. Fair, but if you wanted to, you could throw something like put the humans as something as simple as like fate. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which is like a very... I think quick and dirty system you might refer to it as. Mm -hmm. You very much so like have a list of priority of hey, this is what my character is good at to not as good at. If it's not here, I'm not any good at it. And a mm -hmm. couple descriptors. And you get some situational bonuses and minuses. But you could do something like <laughs> Blades in the Dark if we're doing a more steampunky system at the tier of the mechs. Interesting. And have them have to do more heisty things when the mechs aren't suitable or are broken or you need to get a mech. Interesting. Hmm. I, I have to agree that I do think that mixing systems might be a viable way to handle it. Uh, I'm not very fond of trying to mix the systems because I, I do good to... I do good to hold to the rules of open legend, and it is not very crunchy. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so well, and in open legend, you would just have like narrative scaling, mm -hmm. in that like you would, I would still potentially have two character sheets. Mm -hmm. Just here's my mech, here's me, and it's like they're both level one, but understand that the level one of this mech means that like if it like steps wrong it could squash the human <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do think uh, that actually is something a, a good place to start off and build upon because talking about we've talked about theme and scale well that scale is going to be a big influencer one wrong step from a one wrong step from a, a power loader mech can crush somebody's femur so mm -hmm. you're looking at uh, a, a very large disparity between raw power output but even between power armor level mechs and infantry otherwise they wouldn't be power armors otherwise they wouldn't be desirable to use in any kind of way if they weren't that much better that that much stronger or more useful than a human would be um so i have a couple kind of things for it. The first thing I actually mentioned, I think I mentioned it to Dan and Jacob when I was chatting with them before. Adding a weapon property to the different things that you have. Mm. And yeah. some weapons, like if you want to have your infantry level people at the table be able to affect mech scaled individuals, uh, mech scaled characters then adding the weapon property anti-personnel or something like that or even just armor piercing armor piercing can also work for and the for the personnel on the ground to be able to penetrate and do something mm -hmm. because we do have some analogous portion to this in people that would use armor piercing tank piercing rounds is what we have today. Now the assumption is that Gundania, if you're using Gundams as a as a kind of blueprint, Gundams use Gundanium 
which is kind of like fancy unobtainium type of metal thing. So you could do something with that if you want to. But if it's going to be a more gritty style where you're using steel or titanium or some kind of carbon fiber type of setup and plates, then having those armor piercing rounds are going to be the way to go for or some kind of armor piercing property. This even works for when you're doing tech, uh, when you're doing magitech, because there's the siege property in uh, Pathfinder. They have siege weapons. So yeah. like the backpack ballista uh, <laughs> it is my favorite, least favorite. Uh, it is, uh, it could be termed as something that could affect a power armor sized mech. If yeah. you, uh, magitech mech anyway. If you sure. if it was metal tipped, because it is a ballista, and those have been used in siege warfare, so anything with the siege property might work. In if you're looking for medieval fantasy or something along that line, um, uh, and uh, and if you were able to animate a battering ram as a as a mage, you could use that to try and knock the ankles and stuff like that, or do damage in that way. Um, if you were doing magitech again. So there's ways to do it, but once you start getting too big, as Levi said, this is just, it's just too big. Yeah. This You're a little flea. As long as you're like the size of a fly or a beetle to it, you can do a few things. But if you're something like we talked about last time, the three categories that we put, that I put forward were power armor sized mech, large building sized mech, and then ship sized mech. Well, once you get to ship sized mech, it's going to be really hard to do damage with it's just a weapon. You're going to have to do damage to, to like a power core. You're not actually hitting the outside of the thing. You're trying to get in and do some damage or something like that. In which case, are you really playing mech or are you, or how's that working for you? So mm -hmm. there's a lot to play with in that and implementing that at the table. So I'll, get, yeah, I'll take really a breath. Like that idea. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I really like that idea um, for, especially it made me think of Titanfall because there are certain weapons that you can get as a pilot that are specifically for attacking um, the max. And that does simplify things for you rules wise in that there's all these weapons Unless it specifically has this property, it, you you just can't affect a, a mech with it. It must have this property. Now, those that affect mechs can still affect the humans because they're big and boomy <laughs> usually. Yeah. But that, that makes it a really simple rule. You don't have to think about anything crazy. It's just, does this have the mech attacking property or not? Whatever you want to label that as. Um, and I right. will throw out two... Oh, go ahead, Jake. No, go ahead. No, it just keeps it. I was all I was going to say was it keeps it simple, where it's right. You don't have to overcomplicate things. Yep, it's really helpful. And just to bounce off Levi's uh, outside the box idea too, I was thinking about that. That could be first as a general thought with this is choosing your theme and scale. What we've talked about previously, I think, definitely helps you know. I cart before the horse, horse before the cart, either you're choosing your system and that helps you determine your theme and scale most likely, or vice versa. If you go theme and scale, that's probably going to help you determine what system you want to play in. Uh, you know, whichever direction you go, these three things I think start to mix together. But going off of that, I was thinking about Cogent and Open Legend. If you want to do something that's super crunchy, the human portion could be in Cogent. Pretty simple to throw a character together, but it's a much deadlier system in that you, you can die way faster, whereas Open Legend's a little more heroic, so you jump in the mech, you're going heroic now. That's another... I don't know, that Levi, you just sparked that idea of mine. It was two kind of narrative-based systems, but one's a little more deadlier than the other, so you get that feeling of deadly for humans, but heroic for uh, max. That, that's, it's, an, it's a really it's interesting solid. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I think, seeing as this is intended as a collaboration towards a more specific otherwise goal, maybe we want to start locking in on where you two want to like focus on and what what themes and scales are on your mind mm. for that goal. 
I know for myself, I was pinpointing Savage Worlds um, to do that. They have, they have, you can add enough crunch to give it that mech feel. Um, I wasn't sure I wanted to do the human element of it. I was debating on just everybody gets two character sheets. One is the mech and one is the human. But the, it's not a full blown character sheet. It was actually going to be a non wild card. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Savage Worlds, but essentially your person was not going to be very good at anything, very squishy. Uh, pretty much the stats of a soldier, however you want to reflavor your character a little bit. And then the mech has the main like, wild card stats. So encouraging you, to, don't get out of your mech. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, unless you have to. Yeah, if you have to, you just be prepared to die, you know, kind of yeah. feeling. But and we talked, we touched I, on this before in our other chat that's on that is on Avenue Studios. Um, and we were talking about it in Open Legend at that point, uh, where it was, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead and take the you, you get the companion feet for free, basically, is what we said, right? But mm -hmm. you're the companion, and the mech gets the better stats. Yep. And that really works well if you keep it at the same scale. It actually works really well for power armor ones. Yep. If you want to go up to them too. Yeah. So if you go up to the Gundams, you probably like large building size, then you're probably going to need to do two different character sheets and add in those properties to weapons or attack styles or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and you can add things like the anti-personnel would or the armor piercing would also affect humans but things like EMPs are are bioelectrical are chemical bioelectric bioelectrochemical system of our nervous system wouldn't be nearly as affected by even a large EMP so and i'm talking like from the sun so uh yeah we would mm -hmm. actually be fine if we were in the range of an EMP strike. And so these those weapons would be another tag, I guess, you could use or a special category that you could use to differentiate. Right. So and that can be thrown into any system like we're talking about. So if we're because mm -hmm. I, I know that Jacob wants to and I want to see it done that 25 foot to a, a square type of scale. It seems to be like a nice Goldilocks zone for tabletop gaming yeah and maybe jacob if you wanted to talk about your thought process now that we're getting to applying it to the table doing the specific example of, of what you're thinking of building the thought process of where the building what you're seeing yeah you, know, you have your style you like you have your theme that you kind of like so that yeah. led you to yeah you know right and that's and t typically that was going to be a military style so i'm picturing you know, some buildings intact, some maybe destroyed, but being able to use the buildings too to navigate through the battlefield essentially for cover, for whatever, you know, just getting an advantage, even height advantage, but also in the abil ability to be able to, in Foundry, destroy the buildings. I think that would be fantastic to add to that element. And I think at that scale, along with the theme of the military, you can have that, that nice mixture of, of you know, Battlefield destruction, humanoids being able to hop out, you know, and then it also, with the humanoids hopping out and running around, that also could happen to the enemy mechs. So that leaves you the um, moral choice of, you know, or not. <laughs> hey, this is war. This is war. We squish. Well, we you know, squish. maybe maybe not. Maybe in the worlds you build, there is a code, you know, uh, that... Nobody squishes the humans. You can destroy all the mechs right. and that and that. Mm -hmm. But you know, and that, or maybe that take adds, them prisoner instead. Yep. So that adds like a whole other elemental thought to it all. You know how, and that's you know that that's why I love that scale. And it fits the theme of the military for me. If it's the, and then you could have different size mechs too. So like, say you do get like a big dreadnought mech, mech or even land ship or however you want to call it. You can fit it on that scale, essentially. Mm -hmm. So each square know. is a foot. One yeah. of its feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. One of its feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like a big crawler mech. Yeah, uh -huh. I, and you could do that. I mean, what was it? Wild Wild West with um, oh, yes. the, the spider mech. 
from Wild yeah. Wild West. I love the Spider-Man. Have you seen that, Dan? I don't think so. Uh, it's oh, another dude, one to add that to that. the deal, man. You got to add it to your we'll watch list. To your list. Wild Wild West Maybe with Will Smith. Studios. Yep. Oh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't think I saw that. Yes. Oh, you yes. got to watch it. See, we constantly, yeah. viewers, if you're just coming in fresh to these Around the Hearths and our discussions together, we constantly give Dan a hard time because he went to film school and he doesn't know half of these good flicks that we do so i'm uh oh i i have seen this yeah 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 okay no, there it is. <laughs> good it was just a long time yeah, ago yeah wow it's still going on the list <laughs> yeah, it's okay. a good time yes now listen in my defense i went to film school where film people pick <laughs> <laughs> movies <laughs> well well i'll leave it at that yeah, yeah. it's cool so, to watch an eye go psychedelically out of focus than <laughs> wild wild west <laughs> yeah i'd rather watch wild wild west yeah. um yeah me too <laughs> when it comes to working with scale in uh in games in the games too at your table and and having that marry your theme i don't i do think that there is options that get overlooked because we've got our blinders on about them. There's already size categories in a lot of these games. It's true. Mm. You mm -hmm. are tiny creatures trying to affect right. a large creature, basically. And I can tell That's you right now point. that Savage Worlds has that. And the scale is wonderful because it actually gives the challenges of, hey, if you're a large creature trying to hit a small creature, and they actually break it down. Um, pretty wonderfully giving it its own challenges in, the, in itself mm -hmm. um, so you could even avoid having the whole well everybody carries armor piercing rounds I, I think they would anyways at to a point obviously but you wouldn't have it to could. become a stressor mm -hmm. it, it also depends again back on your theme if your theme is a much more gritty more realistic style even if it's even if it's not super gritty the idea of carrying around an anti-personnel weapon with you all the time is not very not very viable when you look at current tech. I mean, with our current tech, we could build mechs. With yep. our current tech level today, we could build mechs, we could go to the moon, we could go to Mars, we could go all across yeah. the, the solar system with our current tech level. The difference is how unified that effort is to go and do that. If it's an fan, if you've already set up the fantasy for that, then yep. you could work with mostly nowadays type of tech level, but just amped up in scale, and have probably a really good time with it. And I mean, our SD cards are this big, and we've got them almost to where we can fit a terabyte of information on it. Okay, it's not <laughs> it's not crazy to think we would have. A chip key that you could take in as an operating system, stick it into the mech, and it would identify you, and you would have authentication and stuff like that. So, it's Adam really wants a mech. <laughs> I mean, mech is so cool. I I love the Walker mechs too, like the yeah. idea of like uh, the anime eighty six, where you you have these walkers, and then they got a cannon on them, you know, and then there's mm -hmm. different styles. Some have artillery, and that's a cool thing too. Is you have so many options, and that's where I think systems like Open Legend or Suede really work well to combine all of these thoughts and ideas and still can have that crunchy thing. And I just want to step back to the scale modifiers thing because I think that's huge. But I, I love that Suede actually has it broke down. You know, they talk about actually like Gargantuan is Gargantuan is a building, Kaiju or ship, you know, and then you know, there's different there's actually different ways it affects the whole gameplay and how it goes out. The smaller ones obviously can actually hit the bigger ones easier, but doesn't mean that they're going to do damage. But obviously, if I'm shooting a pistol at a ship, it's probably going to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> but on the right. flip side, if you're shooting your ship's you know 120, 120 millimeter cannon at a dude on a beach. I, honestly, the hitting directly is going to be hard to do. Yeah. I mean, with with that big cannon. of a cannon, though, yeah. you're not necessarily <laughs> worried about hitting a. You're not aiming for a headshot. I'm just saying. Uh, you probably get the head. 
and everything else. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, it's it lends itself nicely to what we're talking about. You know, these more open systems. Obviously, the Crunchier systems that are built for it would work the best. But I love the idea of trying to do this in a system like Open Legend or Savage Worlds or you know a generic, as they like to say, system. And, you know, you can take it back over. I just wanted to. I wanted to hit on the scale. I actually like looked it up in the core rule book, just nice. to double check. Just to, I wanted to double check it because I was like, oh yeah, that's right. They have a whole scale thing, and I forgot, I actually forgot about it, and it got me very excited. To build this module. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so nice. <laughs> so, that's the goal, uh, then, right? Yes. I was going to throw out another thing. I know that you have been really excited about with using Savage Worlds is your injury table that you do with that. Fitting yeah. into that theme you like of specific parts of the mech getting damaged, like that's already right. built in the system know. that you can utilize. Right. I think so, when when again, some when people sign up for a mech game, I think they understand that somewhere along the line we're going to do positional or regional, whatever you want to say, location based. There we go. Location based damage to things because it's a mech. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. Your ar your armored core quote quote might be yep. fine but your arm has been damaged you can yep, salvage that, that. Yep. you're gonna take it up and this works well because even when you're doing like aliens invading type of thing or something like that their tech can get mixed with your tech and all of this cool stuff can happen so oh. it's it's pretty fun when you start to to take that and then I think we all kind of are like, yeah, that positional or location-based damage is a good idea for the mech. Now, for the human, mm, you can get a little bit iffy. Yeah. It depends if there's biofeedback or not. Uh, you could you could do that if they're, like, remotely controlled and you have to have a, a brain interface. That's true. That's true. Uh, and you can even do it where... Like if you're if the main character is the mech, this might be a way to implement it as well with those with multiple pilots instead. You you are controlling a squad of people, perhaps, and mm -hmm. they are piloting the mech. And so you have a main pilot and then a backup pilot. And sure. so as they go through, they take fatigue and you can slowly build that fatigue in. It can give somebody a chance to maybe like each of, if each of your players has about three, three little characters, you know, three. Uh, usually, if you give them about three to five small, weak characters and then you have your large, big mech, you're basically controlling squads. And we I think we talked about this in the other chat too, having or perhaps having the group control a squad and then someone's the pilot and someone's the, the mechanic and so on and so forth. And you have these different jobs that they're doing and they themselves are weaker, but they have the distribution of stats for some, somebody that's PC level and that whole group works together. And then, and that is the downtime type of stuff. That's your downtime, that's your repair, that you're getting this taken care of, making sure you're prepped well. Maybe if you roll well, you have an advantage on your roles in a certain role in combat or something like that because you're performing so well in your mechanic repairs or you were able to, uh, like the maybe the leader of the group, because the pilot and the leader do not have to be the same thing. Maybe mm -hmm. the leader of the group who does all the red tape and stuff like that, that person whether it's an individual PC, whether it's an individual player, or each player has their own little squad they're controlling, it doesn't really matter. When you roll well to cut through the red tape, as it were, you might get a better uh, scanner upgrade. Or your, your intel person might have got better intel from the spies working on the other side. <laughs> so you have this information of we thought there were going to be three mechs going in this operation that we were going to have to face but we found out there were two hidden mechs that are uh using cloaks or something a cloaker device or something like that to make them harder to pick up now we know they're there or now we know they will be there and so they might take something else and that's a way you can handle this scale and theme at the table. And this will lead into when we're discussing mixing scales and themes next time, 
these two will go together. But you can do that and then have all of these different mechanics working together, even if they're under the same system or different systems. Because maybe you, maybe you want to use the same system, keep it easy. Or maybe for the intrigue stuff, you want to use an intrigue system. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't have to pick one or the other. It's easier to work with one or the other in a in a virtual tabletop. It's so that way you don't have to switch between games. But yeah. if you're not doing that, if this is you at home, you can do whatever you want to yeah. fiddle faddle around with it. <laughs> maybe you like the way the intrigue works in one system. And so you use that for all the downtime stuff, but then all the mech stuff you do with another system. Like Levi said. Yeah, and I think generally what you're getting at too um, is one of the expectations generally, I think, with mechs is that downtime activity. So yeah. that might lead into what system you select or just being aware that when you select a system, do you want to do the downtime stuff? You don't necessarily have to, but I think a lot of people would kind of expect that upgrading the Mac and, you know, going on missions. Maybe the missions are, are the thing you just do the missions because you need the money or the parts to upgrade the Mac. You know, how much is it important? And that might help you pick your system too. Um, so that goes back to that theme, selecting the theme, selecting the scale, because like we talked about in scale, how big the Mac is and how, uh, post-scarcity you are <laughs> might determine how hard it is to upgrade your mech and um, no good or bad there. It's just what, you know, what do you want to play yep. and being aware of that. All right. So we better get to final thoughts. What are y'all's final thoughts? We've kind of been building into them. So. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely like Levi's idea, especially playing in person. I think, that would lend itself well to covering both sides really well. Um, there's so many systems out there. There really is. It's almost overwhelming. <laughs> but, um, you know, picking the best of what works for your crew at the end of the day, it's what do your players want? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think final thought kind of hit on it, I think, is really looking at theme, scale, system, and all of that together, they all kind of will help you determine. And of course, based again on those expect ex expectations and something we haven't shouted out yet, but we always do is the session zero stuff. And like Jacob said, talking with your players, deciding what you guys want to focus on might help you know okay these are the elements of a game that i'm going to implement to the table which might and here's my theme that might determine help you determine scale vice versa kind of thinking about all these options together will help you formalize and finalize how, how the game's going to run i should say that it's not just harder for the gm to run two systems for one <laughs> game it is also harder for the players I know quite a few players who have a hard time keeping tabs of one rule system at a time, because keeping tab of rules is hard when you don't get to just do it all the time. Like, once yes. per week, you gotta remember how two different systems work and how your roles should work. But if you have players who are also multi-system aficionados, it can work better. Or if one system is exceedingly simple. Mm-hmm. All right. And I guess my final thought to build off of Levi's is that choosing one system to work with is just, it is really good for those online games. And choosing whatever you want to work with is better in those in person games. But don't be afraid to do it. Because Levi, Levi makes a solid idea for it. The, the original D&D &D was a combination of a couple different systems. And look how it's turned out. Yeah, it's true. So, chainmail plus something else. So, 
don't be afraid to do it. You may find that you create your own system that you like, that works just right for what you're wanting to do. True. Mm. So, all right, that's what I've got. And that means we've come to the end of this particular discussion segment. Do remember that the Inn of Planar Crossroads, as well as Avenue Studios, would welcome your support either through Patreon, Locals, or direct contact. And, as always, have a great day. God bless, and enjoy. Bye. 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 This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you. Smoother at those, uh, cake. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> Good anime out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Team. That got really popular for them. Oh, I was just saying, I, I'm getting a lot smoother on those uh, outs, those ins and outs. It's just... You practice four times in one, one mm. sitting, you know? <laughs> oh. Yep. All right. Let me see. Awesome. Thank you. I I mean, you guys have pretty much hit the nail. You've heard my end of it. I'm looking at Savage Worlds. Um, not set on military yet, but it might be military-like. Um so obviously Adam mm. and Dan and I can talk more about it. Well, you can do military or you can do military contractors if you still yeah. want some structure like mercs because yeah. uh, those would also be viable. They still have enough Very structure. <laughs> I mean, you could do space pirates if you want to. It's your thing. Yeah, which would be fun. <laughs> I know. I, and that's the thing is that, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind your guys' input too because like, I don't want to be tropey, but I'm also like the military works out well. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, you can play into it. Tropey's not bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. tropes are tropes for a reason. Exactly, they're fun. <laughs> so Almost I, all of my games are heavily tropey. <laughs> yeah, they do seem to hit right. I mean, usually people who are in those genres are like, "I want those tropes because that's the reason I'm here." <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. well, it was fun chat with you guys, um, and. Uh, sorry, I'm not making the last one. What? What are you laughing about? Um, nothing. Wild West has got one star rating. <laughs> what? Really? I still had it up. <laughs> Who on, gave it a uh, one star? That's not fair. On on our our favorite movie uh, critique place of ever, Rotten Tomatoes. Really? One we star votes. Oh, it's only got a hundred and some votes. Critics. Actually, it's only got a 28% score. I'm, I was just trying. Get out of here, Jake. I'm, I'm no. just dragging you. All right, yeah. <laughs> you do your All right, guys. En enjoy your night. Yep. Um, Thanks, buddy. We'll talk space more about it. I already have a map started, so we'll nice. flush it out more. I I'm going to stick with the one yeah. square inch grid is 25 feet, because I think it makes sense for what I'm going for, what we're going for, so... It is what a nice tech level are you going for? That's what I wanted you guys to help me make the decision, and I don't know because I, at first I was like I like that like World War Two ha half destroyed the planet, and this is like a post apocalyptic. But then I was like, you know, I don't, I do a lot of post apocalyptic stuff. <laughs> How about we do like a uh, a thriving w invasion of outer species, almost. Almost like Jacob's lab. So pre-apocalyptic? Yeah, in a way. I think so it's not post-apocalyptic, it's just apocalyptic. Yeah, it's just <laughs> daring the apocalyptic. So I don't well, know, yeah. I had I played with a lot of thoughts. I've also thought like we could incorporate the like space marine feel where we're like invading territories or something where we're the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, like a colonial game. Correct. But more space mm -hmm. colonial. So I don't know. Just, yeah. So I don't know I, if you guys want to throw some ideas out there on the chat. Because well, it I'm depends. Not are you going to go for a one shot? Are you going to try and build a world? Or are you going to try and make a one shot? That's I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I want to build a one shot. But I think what's going to end up happening, it's going to be like a 
This is a one shot with a lot of extra that you're welcome to turn into a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hit me up, hit me up for more maps. <laughs> you could satisfy yourself by saying, here's a campaign hook adventure. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So. And then honestly, if it turns out well and people are buying and the and it's flying off the shelves, then I can add more to it and add on more modules that would yeah. fit it more at that point in time. So yeah. actually, that's a good idea. And that, but mm-hmm. I, I'll probably need a little bit of your guys' help to build the setting and world. Just to, I don't want to be overwhelming, but I also want a nice descriptor if we're going to be doing that because I don't want it to be uh, chintzy, I guess is the word. I'm well, we've use. got uh, Sci Fi July also. So, correct. Uh, it could build into that. Uh, we could do a, a revisiting of the setting during Sci Fi yeah. July. It's not a bad idea. And that could be more sp- based on the space where this is on like the, invasion team essentially or you know raiding team or however you want to call them 